So we are excited, folks. We want to let you know as you're listening and if you're like, hmm, I like that. I want to hear more of this gentleman. Well, you can hear more because I put their links in the description right down there. So that way, if you're listening, you can hear plenty more where that came from at their links. And also want to let you know it's going to be a fairly flexible kind of debate today. So it's going to be a roughly 10 minute opening statement from each side, and they can use that 10 minutes on their side as they decide to as they go. And then we'll have open discussion followed by Q&A. So if you have a question, fire it into the old live chat. And if you tag me with at modern day debate, it makes it a little bit easier for me to make sure I don't miss any while putting them in the old list. And then super chats also an option. So in that case, you get to make not only a question, but you could also make a, co a comment toward one of the speakers during the question and answer to which they'd of course get a chance to respond to. And it would push your question to the top of the list during the Q&A. So with that, Without any further ado, we are very excited for this, folks. We are going to kick it over to our dearest, do I remember right, that it was Dry Apologist, also known as Caleb, as well as Craig, that you guys are going to get the ball rolling. Yep, yeah, Superb. Well, thanks so much, right. guys. It's a pleasure to have you, and the floor is all yours. All right, so I'm going to go first, so this is going to be real quick. To start, I want to define what I mean by a rational belief. I take it that a belief is rational if the reason to suggest that it's true is greater than the reason to, to, excuse me, to suggest that it's false. So one should weigh the strengths of the positive and negative arguments for a claim in order to examine how rational it is. With that being said, I'm gonna present what I call an argument from convergence. The argument goes like this. Jesus was an unusually impressive moral and religious teacher who existed at a time when a messianic figure was expected by at least some people. It's very unlikely that such an unusually impressive moral and religious teacher or figure would come about at a time when a messianic figure was expected. That could, if Christianity is true, but it would be less expected if Christianity is false. Therefore, that convergence is reason to believe Christianity is true. Now, that argument's not a proof that Christianity is true, but it does suggest that Christianity is true. So in the absence of any stronger defeaters, I think it is rational to believe that Christianity is true. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Craig. Okay, well, that was pretty straightforward. Um, I, I thought I was only going to have five minutes, but uh, anyone who's listened to my YouTube channel knows that I can go and go and go, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I have two main points. Uh, is Christianity rational or is it reasonable? The first one, you don't necessarily have to be a Christian to understand. Matter of fact, it's tailored strictly to naturalists and seculars. This morning, as all mornings, I do what I talked about a thousand times on my YouTube channel. I have a series of rituals and practices that produce in me almost routinely total peace of mind. Is it rational to participate in some? Is it a rational enterprise to participate in something that produces total peace of mind, yes, it's eminently reasonable. Dare I say it is actually wise. So how it works is like this. I disappear in my prayer closet. I have a powerful subjective internal experience, 100% real to me. I honestly believe it's God, but irrespective of whether it is God or not producing the belief, that, produce, that, that ritual that I do, that prayer life that I do within an hour has produced almost complete peace of mind. What the Bible calls the peace which passeth all understanding. Now, you may have noticed these dangerous and difficult times out there with the coronavirus quarantine. And in my particular, my particular family, it's actually even worse. All my immediate family lives in New York City. That's my mother and my sisters. And it's, there are some scary things going on. The, the outside world has to work a lot harder to rattle my cage internally because I have a powerful prayer life that connects me to a subjective experience that almost nobody would argue produces within me peace of mind. So that's one thing. It's eminently reasonable to practice something that produces peace of mind. I would say it's wise. Point number two, I've talked about again on my channel hundreds of times. Um, if somebody told you this group of people, I always say about Bigfoot, but I guess I'll change it for Bigfoot because that never seems to work. The night in question when I became a Christian, I went to a church, wasn't expecting anything to happen. And I had a really powerful, intense, again, subjective experience, but I, it was really powerful. And I honestly believed it's God. Now, that experience was real to me. Is it rational to predicate your beliefs on something that you directly experience? Yes. Normally, people, especially atheists, mishear this and say it's rational for an atheist to now believe me that God exists. 
was it rational for me to change my beliefs predicated basically on what I directly experienced? Yes. Let's say, for example, somebody said to you, this group of people, when they bang on drums, they can make a horse dance. I'm, I'm an agnostic about that. I'm, skept I'm skeptical. So I go to a room where people are participating in that ritual. Sure enough, they're banging on drums as a horse is dancing. I am no longer skeptical up to that point. That is sufficient reason for me to go, okay, that's true. I can now, it is completely and 100% reasonable to predicate your beliefs on that which you di directly experience. Matter of fact, empiricism is based on sensory observation. If you cannot trust your direct sensory input, you then you can't trust science. That's, that's the root of science is what you directly experience. So if you can't trust your basic sensory apparatus, you can't trust anything. And I get that an atheist will not believe me that the experience was God. But I, as I'm going to try to do in the, the months to come on my, my channel, I believe that I can actually put up a have a way for people to participate in those experiences for themselves. Nobody denounce, d doubts that there is such a thing as a numinist experience, a spiritual experience. The only thing that you're doubting is the reality of what's animating the experience, which I get. It's not rational for necessarily someone to hear this and go, Craig's right, God exists. But it is eminently rational and reasonable for me to predicate my beliefs based on my direct experience. Matter of fact, it's totally correct thing to do. And, you know, I guess we can go to discussion. I don't, we can, we can, that can be enough. I don't need to go on necessarily. You got it. Thanks so much, Craig. And we will kick it over to Skylar Fiction and Dr. Josh as we welcome them. Thanks so much, guys, for being here. The floor is all yours. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, we're glad to be here tonight. This is exciting. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I figured, you know, I'm not going to use any Old Testament violence tonight. You know, this is something that I talk about so often. And I probably, people are so tired of me talking about babies. So I am not going to talk about those things tonight. I'm going to talk about other things with Christianity that make it not rational. Right? So uh, I'm going to share my screen here. I actually formed an argument today. thought this might work. We'll play around. If you guys, we'll see where you guys uh, disagree with the premise. Uh, let's see here. Google Chrome. I'm going to start screen, uh, sharing screen now, guys, if that's all right. Let me know if you guys can see it. Is that good? It's fine with me. Yeah, but, hey, can you guys see the – as long as you can see me and you guys can see the mm -hmm. argument, we're good. All right. Let me know if something goes wrong here. Here's here's my argument. I thought we would focus around one of the major characters. I just can see mirrors. I don't see the argument. Uh, that's lame. Let's see here. I think that is the argument, though, Caleb. Do you see like me and then you oh, see a, a piece of paper? Sorry, that, was, that wasn't funny. That's right. That's right. Can I mute myself <laughs> again? No, I don't I don't see, see any it. argument. All right, here. I'll just read it. Then we're gonna have to I'll just read the argument. We'll just do it this way. And if you need I'll me to repeat it, it later, down. yeah, yeah. And if you need me to repeat it, well, we can always bring it up. All right. Premise one using, like I said, we were talking about a, a main character of the Bible, which is the devil, Satan. Uh premise one. God desires, uh, God's desires come from his nature. Premise two, God's desires, God desires to save the maximum amount of souls possible. Premise three, Satan is a real being that attempts to lead souls away from God and salvation. Keep in mind, folks, I'm, I'm putting this in the perspective of using, doing an internal critique. This is the Christian's worldview, obviously not mine. I'm setting up these premises from uh, a, a typical Christian's view on Satan and God and stuff like that. They can feel free to disagree with any of these premises and we can get into that. Uh, so premise three was Satan is a real being that attempts to lead souls away from God and salvation. Premise four, God does not desire that Satan lead souls away, uh, lead souls away from him and their salvation. Premise five, human beings would still have free will if there was no Satan. Premise six, God has the ability to poof Satan out of existence. Premise seven, if there is no Satan, more souls would be saved. Conclusion, God goes against his own desires, which means he is going against his own nature. This is logically impossible, making your God not logically possible. Uh, so, you know, the, the gist of this argument is, is the idea that, you know, God obviously... I would hope. Well, well, you know what? Actually, we'll wait till we get the dialogue, and then I'll, I'll we'll see what kind of premises they accept from there, what they disagree with. Um, 
but I, I would, I'd have to argue if God desires that to save the most amount of souls and you have a, a being out there that is your adversary that is actively leading souls away from you, uh, by eliminating that adversary, it seems pretty simple that you would save more souls. Uh, I think that's good. You know, we I won't go on too long. And then, uh, Dr. Josh, maybe you want to top it. We have a second topic that we can argue about also. Uh, but we'll, we'll present both and you guys can kind of, you know, feel it out where you guys want to go. Go ahead, Dr. Josh, my man. So I always feel inclined to say something like this, <clears throat> particularly on a topic like this. It's not my field of study. Uh, I haven't uh, I haven't done theology in quite a long time, but um, and we'll see how it goes. So I pulled Millard Erickson's systematic theology off the shelf, and uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, some of the core doctrines of Christianity. That while I I wouldn't say that um, anybody could necessarily prove, given the position of uh, Orthodox Christianity, that these things are contradictory. They seem contradictory. And I, I want to, sorry, that was Siri. Um, so I wanted to talk about the Trinity. So Erickson writes, and this I just pulled Erickson because he's one of the standard theologies that I read back in the day. Although it seems on the surface to be self a self-contradictory doctrine, and is not overtly or explicitly stated in Scripture. Nevertheless, devout minds have been led to it as they sought to do justice to the witness of Scripture. And at his conclusion, he writes, In the final analysis, the Trinity is incomprehensible. We cannot fully understand its mystery. Those aspects of God that we will never fully comprehend should be regarded as mysteries exceeding our reason, rather than as paradoxes that conflict with reason. And I think that's a fair statement. Of course, he's coming from the position of orthodoxy. And, uh, so he would say, as all of you well know, um, that this is not a contradiction, that the threeness and oneness at the same time um, of the Godhead is not a contradiction strictly, but it it is beyond our reason. Um, now, of course, there have been many attempts to try to figure out throughout history, Christian church history, um, you know, one divine essence and three modes, uh, or uh, Christ took on, Jesus took on the Logos. Um, yeah, but, but orthodoxy says you have three persons, but one essence, and the essence is undivided. It, uh, it is fully... Um, um, possessed by each member of the Trinity, but yet undivided. Um, and, you know, if we, if we come at this from a rational standpoint, from a, from a logical standpoint, uh, even though this is definitely outside my field, um, as Erickson says, it, it certainly seems like a contradiction to us, and it is beyond our reason. But the faith position says... It's not a contradiction. I believe that it's not a contradiction. Um, and I think that that position is the honest position to take, that you, you can't rationalize to the Trinity. And I, I think that's, a, that's an important distinction to make, in my opinion. Uh, being able to say that from that strictly logical, rational standpoint, something like the Trinity, something like the, the anthropic person of Christ, these are not things that we can rationalize to. We can logically get at with our finite reason. Uh, but if you adhere to that position in the Christian faith, that it's a faith position that you take and say, I believe that someday, um, you know, may, we won't be able to understand it fully, but we'll be able to understand it perhaps, um, you know, more like, more uh, as God does. So if I have any time left, Skylar, go for it. Yeah, I, I would just add a couple things. Like when, when it comes to the idea of the Trinity, there's a lot to... Uh, I talk about, I mean, first of all, uh, there's lots of problems first. I mean, how we usually identify, uh, individuals go see your mother, baby. I love you. You're supposed to be in bed, but you're up. Say bye-bye. Say hi to the fans. All right. Say hello to everybody. Go back to sleep now. I'm, I'm arguing on the internet. What am I supposed to do with you up here? All right. So. Uh, I would say there's a lot of problems, right? Usually when we talk about, uh, when we distinguish human beings or, uh, 
uh, beings, we, we, we do it by their minds, right? Beings don't have multiple minds. Uh, in the Bible, it literally talks as if Jesus has a separate mind than the Father, and then the Spirit has its own mind. So you have three thinking minds, yet it's all the same being. Uh, it seems more polytheist, I think, more than anything else when you read the Bible. Uh, I think also there are problems with, I mean, you look at someone like Jesus praying to himself. I mean, praying to his heavenly Father, but he doesn't seem to un he doesn't seem to have direct access to him in some level. He's, he's, he's talking to him in a way that he's almost like, relift this burden from me. Uh, and I think there's problems with that. Uh, but, I, but I'm really more interested, to be honest. With you. I love this. There is definitely problems with the Trinity. Uh, this isn't a view that's shared by all Christians. I mean, there are many Christian sects that don't believe in a Trinity. Some arguing in the church, um, which is interesting. Why do so many people have so many different beliefs, but yet these things are fundamental somehow? Uh but I'm really interested more here about the Satan stuff. So sorry. It's my favorite. I, I, it's one of those topics I never get to talk about. And Satan is such a weird character that it, I, I don't understand why, how you could logically, how it logically follows that this being would even still exist. He's an enemy of God. He leads people away. It seems like it would be very simple for God to be like, bye bye. And then God's in whatever, or Satan's in whatever kind of hell that God wants to send him to apparently. All right. I think that's it for right now. You got it. We'll go right into the open discussion. So thanks so much, guys. Mm. Excited to hear this. Where do you guys want to start? Uh, I can start two places. Right. Um, and then anybody can go from off. Nobody has to address what I say. But just based off of what you guys said, part of the reason why I have such easy time interacting with atheists is that I don't necessarily demand that anybody believe in Satan as a literal being. It's perfectly... I'm perfectly content if somebody wants to think of Satan as a metaphorical construct that is that is anthropomorphizing human evil and talk about it that way. And actually, I still think the Bible can be eminently useful in defeating evil as a metaphorical construct, not necessarily a little being. As far as what Josh said, I, you know, again, I'm not I'm not 100 percent convinced that that you need to actually believe in the Trinity to be a Christian. Plenty of Christians. I do believe in the Trinity, and I do believe it's coherent, but there's plenty of Christians who don't, and I don't consider them not part of the family. Um, some Christians do. I'm not one of them. I, I doubt Josh is either. Uh, I believe it's rational, but as far as what he said, which I thought was really interesting, which I hope we can talk about, is the, the idea, and I think that's what he was trying to get at, is faith is beyond reason. What the Bible will say specifically is that my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts, as the heaven is high above the world. Uh, so my thoughts above yours. And then it also says, trust the Lord with all your heart, cling not to your own understanding. Now, it's entirely possible from a purely rational point of view, purely reasonable point of view, if I were talking to a physicist right now and he were trying to explain particle physics to me that I wouldn't understand him at all, just rationally, like his intelligence might be so beyond my capacity that I might not be able to understand what he's talking about. So I don't necessarily see it as this irrational faith position that, there are things beyond the purview of human intellect that God only is privy to. I see that as kind of a normal aspect of faith. Um, and then I'll let dry apologies talk. Well, I, I just want to, I want to clarify something though, because sure. do you, so most say from what I understand, most Christians believe there's a Satan. So are you denying there's a Satan or yeah, you can interpret it. People can make up whatever they want about the Bible and believe whatever they want. That's true. They can interpret it however they feel, but I want to know you, and you seem to have traditional Christian beliefs, like I do. Christians, but right? I don't. But you believe you to. do believe in Satan? Do you not believe in Satan? Yes. Or? Yes. But just uh. like you will adopt a, a rhetorical position for the purposes of being in a debate, I will tone down what I actually believe so I can have a conversation that's open-ended with people who don't share my beliefs. You know. Well, no, it's it's, that's not what it's about. It's not about you. I want your beliefs. I don't want you to tone down what you believe. We're having a discussion on the facts of the matter. So, like, if well, you believe in okay, Satan, okay, we well, should give my argument. Let me stop, then, you, but, let me stop you right yeah. there. We're not having a discussion on the facts of the matter. We're having a discussion on philosophical speculation. Neither of us are God. Neither of us are privy to all the facts. So we're having a discussion on philosophical philosophical well, you, speculations. So if I'm you're just saying that everything's to, opinion, why are we having an argument? If we're just going to say everything's just human opinion, why would we just have a debate about this then? Because we have different opinions. That's a no-brainer. We have different well, I mean, but, okay, so if I bring, if I pull up an argument and, and I and I put an argument in syllogism form, 
I ask you, like, what do you like? Basically, what what premise do you disagree with here? And then, like, you got your your go to so far is to say, well, you don't have to believe it's a real Satan. Well, you do. So, like, how are you dealing with my? No, argument? I don't. Wait a minute. Stop. Well, that. you said you do believe Excuse it. Too. You don't I have said to. I do. You just told me I have to. Oh my god! This is this to. is pedantic. Like this is it's not about it, it's okay. Yes, you don't have to. You can believe whatever you want. Obviously, Greg. Okay, thanks. right. That's so, obvious. It's thank obvious. You. I don't. I shouldn't have to like preface it. I shouldn't have to like literally ex explain myself further. That literally that you. All right. So let's deal with my argument. Maybe Caleb. So who? What premise do you guys disagree with with the argument? Well, I just want to make some general statements. So I think where Craig's coming from is that he's saying in a more like general, like mere Christianity, a Christian wouldn't have to be committed to those positions. Now, from my perspective, I, I do think somebody has to hold to the Trinity to be a Christian. I, I don't think Satan is something somebody has to hold to, but I do agree that it does seem like it's starting to rub with traditional Christian beliefs. I'll I mean, I believe both of these claims, so I'll defend it. I'm not going to um, take the, the lesser route, but Craig can defend his own perspective here. So in regards to, I'll start with the Trinity first. So I mean, like I've done a whole debate on the Trinity, so it takes a long time to sort it out. Like Jim Majors and I had a whole debate on this, but so with the Trinity, I don't see any contradiction. I'm really not a fan of the idea that like we can't understand it. It's not something we can have a perfect analogy for, but there's no contradiction and I really don't have a, a problem with grasping the basics of the Trinity, even though probably a majority of theologians write as if there should be a problem. Like the, sounds like the person that Dr. Josh quoted from. I mean, basically God has one mind and his divine nature, but there's three different persons that partake of that one mind. Now, Jesus is God and human, so he has a human mind and a divine mind. When Jesus is praying, he's praying to God the Father. So he's praying to the person that partakes of that divine mind. So his person, his humanity is praying to them, so he's not talking to himself. So it's three different entities. It'd be like um, three different, so like somebody asked me the other day, like what if you had three different people that were all, um, like they all had the same powers, would that be a trinity? I would say, well, they're they're um, disconnected. But if you had three people that were ontologically connected and they all shared the same mind and powers, that would essentially be a trinity. I don't see any contradiction in that. So now moving on to, and I'm not saying that totally settles it, but to me, like, I really don't see a contradiction or even an apparent contradiction with the trinity once it's broken down. Now, with Schuyler's argument, essentially this is um, a theological um, version or, or more theological pointed version of the problem of evil and I've had a discussion on the problem of evil on Skylar's channel and I recently wrote a short book on it so it's another topic that takes a long time to sort out but the premise that I would deny would be um, I would deny both premise six and premise seven so premise six God can poof the devil out of existence is what I remember premise six being so yeah, yeah. physically how God can how would, yeah how would you defeat premise okay. six yes well, when, I, when we say defeat, I'm going to undermine it, right? Sure. So God physically can take the devil out of existence. But what I would argue is that would conflict with God's moral nature, his moral character, which would need some unpacking. And again, I, I talked about that you know, a number of months ago with you, but we didn't talk about the devil. And then premise, so we can go more into that. But basically, I would say Wait, it would conflict with... Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 hold on, hold on. Though. No, no, no. My premise isn't incorrect, though. You agreed that he could do no. this. No, 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 no. Let me explain. No, Skylar, I got to talk. Onto, it doesn't change the premise. It, no, what you I got to talk. No, I got to yeah. talk. So premise six, I would question. I'll go back to why I would question it, but hold on. Premise seven, if there's no devil, then more souls would be saved. I also disagree with that premise because God um, judges people's hearts, and I don't think if the devil exists or not, I mean, not, not all Christians will necessarily agree with me, but I don't think that, um, the number of souls is contingent upon that. But let's focus on premise six because that's where the meat of the argument okay, I mean, you is. You're kind of just brazen over like, well, okay, well, what? Okay, premise seven, the idea, well, if someone's trying to attempt to lead souls away, are you saying he never succeeds? Right. Can devil doesn't something? succeed in this. Oh, hold on, Craig. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I got to finish. I got to finish. I know. I'm telling The Craig. devil succeeds in tempting people. But my perspective 
which not all Christians will hold this perspective, is that God still judges people's hearts. So say there was less temptation in the world. It's not the point. The point. Wait, does he succeed in tempting them? If he tempts them, does he succeed? He's saying that God only allows the temptation up to what sure. the person was willing agree. to do. Like, sure. Like, okay. God, God, the pornography, God lets the devil put the pornography there. Really but God only allows the temptation up to what the person is willing to do. That it's a test where. where okay. Wait, wait, and when you. So if the person was said. willing to do it, he would have still allowed the temptation. So say God, someone was. A lying was the sin. We'll just give an example. Lying was the sin, right? Someone right. was willing to lie. God would still allow Satan to tempt his creatures to lie if he knew they were going to do it. Oh, yeah, but let's. I, what I wanted to talk about was the, the premise that you guys were in dispute of, where God could just poof Satan out of existence. God does do that, according to the scripture. At the end of the era, God puts Satan down into the pit for a thousand-year reign of Christ, and he poofs him out of existence. And, that, and then we have the world without evil, we have the world without sorrow, sickness, or death for, for a thousand for a thousand year reign of Christ. And then you, I mean, so this actually does happen. The, the point of the Bible or, or the point of life isn't we live a perfect life now. I mean, I, I can understand why you might be asking why, but to me, it makes perfectly reasonable sense that we live a life where there are temptations and trials and tribulations and evils to be overcome in this life. And the promise of the gospel is that at the end of this life and at the end of the era, yeah, God puts Satan in a box and he's done. And then the people who are on the winning circle all live forever without sorrow, sickness, temptation, evil, death. But we've all chosen to be there. I don't see it, how that's unreasonable at all. But I'll let you I mean, all, all you're saying to me is that basically God allowed the devil to lead all these souls away from him for thousands of years until he finally gets away, gets around to poofing him out of existence. There's no reason why he couldn't have poofed the devil out of existence in the beginning. There's no logical reason. All the devil well, doing the main, is the if sin is that that goes against God's nature, why would you allow a being, even if it's not about saving them, why would you allow a being to tempt people into doing things that go against your own nature? Because those beings that's the whole are point. what they wait. Okay, let me explain. I, these are philosophical qu questions, by the way, and this is the problem of evil. But why would you allow a being to do what a being would do. Why would you allow Satan? Satan, to not humans. Okay, listen. I'm, Why dude, would you... all, I'm listening to you, but okay. you're, I, I understand Christian theology, but what I'm asking you is like, so and I'm why about to Satan answer, is, so, so you're listen, saying Satan has free listen. will also. If you Excuse believe me. Satan has free will, I'm going to ask you to justify it. Excuse me. Listen means listen. It doesn't mean uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, me you guys are fucking point. dealing with the actual issue is what my frustration is. Okay, well, frustration is not fair. Take a chill. Take a chill. Your frustration is not fair. It's really not. It's, it's okay. Well, unnecessarily just get to actually Take making the dealing with the issue. Good. What I'm Take actually saying to you. Me. When I say listen, I mean listen. So why would God allow Satan to tempt human beings? Because those human beings become. There's a trial period called life where human beings become what they actually are. Free will means that. Heinrich Himmler becomes evil. Nobody forces him to become evil. He's tempted into evil. God wants people to make up their own minds. I'm an evil douchebag, so I'm going to live out like that. That's how I'm going to live my life. And God will disappear and give you up to the desires of your own heart. And if your heart is evil, you will follow that out to destruction. There's a perfectly rational reason. I think that's perfectly reasonable. But, you know, go ahead. Whatever. Can you give me your scriptural basis for what you just claimed there? Yes, I can. Not off the top of my head, but I can give you five. And I will in, when, okay. on the that, that, that basically God the will, wants yes, to. I okay, hold on. Hold on. Will, okay. you want, I, I'm sorry. You didn't want me to interrupt you, but I start talking. You're interrupting me now. Okay. So I'm yes, trying to explain to here, guys. Your argument is that God will allow Satan to lead people away from him when his goal, when God's goal is to lead the maximal amount of people to him. That is a contradiction. You I, can't say you want, it, it would be like me, I'm going to try to keep my children safe in the house, and then I hire a babysitter who murders children. No, no, no. You missed, you, you that, missed Satan is the adversary of God. Satan is the one who's leading human beings away from God, okay. trying to get them to sin, to commit immoral actions that go against God's nature. 
and God allows you, somebody to lead people you away missed from him. The point. You missed the point of why you, you, you didn't articulate that. a point. That's fine. Then let me articulate. You missed the point of what I meant. Then fine. You missed what I meant. What I meant is you have children. Some of those children are are going to turn into destructive, evil douchebags. That's not what you would want for them. But you have why? allowed them. Why are they going to turn that because way? Because he is allowing us to choose who we want to serve. Choose you this day who you will serve. Well, God or the so, devil. But why would so we naturally go to evil? Devil, why would we well, naturally go to evil well, as human uh, beings? I'm sorry. You we, want, we have to take is, this point by point. We, we can't might, like sit there and you storm roll a bunch well, of we ideas also, out and like all these assumptions without also, dealing these point by point. In the, in the, right. uh, just because this has been going quick and intense, and I don't blame you guys for having passion, I, I do just want to make sure that Dr. Josh and uh, Caleb, if they yeah, want to jump in say, as well. We with it. In, yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't have passion for this. Go ahead, Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> Josh. No, I just want to I just, just want to go back to focusing on premise 6. We can I mean premise 7 is minor like I have a technical disagreement with premise 7 but premise 6 is the thrust mm -hmm. of the argument. So sure. God can poof the devil out of existence. Well that needs to be um unpacked otherwise it's begging the question in favor of a perspective that I don't necessarily accept. Physically, God has the power to poof the devil out of existence. Just like physically, God has the power to lie. But that would yeah. conflict with his moral nature. So God cannot lie, not because he physically he doesn't have the lie. power to lie. Wait, if you can't lie, Skyler, he Skyler, have the power to I'm sorry. I have to be able to finish. Thank yeah. you. So it would conflict with God's point, point, moral point. nature yeah. to poof the devil out of existence. And this would go into explaining my whole theodicy, which is going to be a time-consuming affair, but that's why I would test premise six. Now, go ahead. Well, the problem is, is like you, you, you admit that he can do something. So then premise six is correct. You're just saying he won't do something because of his nature. Well, he can't. Well, first of all, I don't know where you would get the, the justification to say he can't eliminate whoever he wants to eliminate, right? The, as the potter has the right to do with the clay as he pleases. As many Christians argue when we talk about Old Testament ethics, all right. So now this idea that somehow God is impotent and can't uh, just poof Satan out of existence, you're going to have to justify that. You're saying he goes against his nature. He's going to do it anyways later on. I'm trying to understand if he, he's going to do it later on. How does that go against his nature, Caleb? Well, I explained this on your, not this particular aspect, but the wider theodicy on your show about six months ago. So God, I'm, and not all Christians are going to agree with me. But it fits well with Romans 8 that for the pre-heavenly time frame, God is working in a more limited context. And that's allowing creatures, not just the devil, but other people as well. I mean, this argument could be just to fit just as fine with an evil being like Hitler. Why doesn't God poof Hitler out of existence? God's yeah, working with where people have, where he has limited himself, not because and again, it's not his powers are physically limited. It's that his powers have to work alongside his moral nature. And you're saying, well, where's the justification for that? Well, it fits in right with your argument because you said God desires come from his nature. Yeah, I agree. So it all has to work alongside his nature. I, I'm sorry, you're, you haven't articulated. You're just saying it's his nature not to poof Satan out of existence. But he's going to poof Satan. Well, not going to poof it. He's going to get rid of Satan out of existence later. So it obviously doesn't matter what time period it's in that he goes that he gets Satan out of existence. He's going to do it anyways. So you saying that it would go against his nature to get him out of existence doesn't make any sense. He's going to do it later. Also, I don't know where you get this idea of a limited time period, right? Why is there a, a limit on time and when God's time work and framework, how he's going to do things? So I, I'm sorry. I don't know how that works now. What well, fits in the wider context of the theodicy that I argue. So I argue that God, his um, relationship with the pre-heavenly world is more limited. So when we get to the eschaton, then Satan won't be a part of the heavenly universe. So it's at that point when Satan doesn't have the power to tempt people. And that fits fine with scripture. So it's like, I don't understand your point. And then you made well, this other point about the potter and the clay. Hold on. Wait a minute, Hold you on. just say, well, he won't have the power to tempt people then. Why does he have it now? 
because it fits within the wider context of my theodicy. I explained yeah, this to you. Dude, like, we don't know your theodicy. You're talking to an audience that hasn't heard your theodicy. Yeah, so we don't have to this is a debate on the problem of evil. Dude, dude I talked to 100 people, bro. I don't remember the particulars of every conversation that we have. So, like, it also for the audience's sake, tell them. They have no clue what you're talking about. So when you say that, like, your theodicy makes it fit, tell, tell us how it makes it fit. Sure. So I just want to pull up this verse in. Shoot. Okay, well, it's Romans chapter 8. I'll find it in a second. So my theodicy is that for the pre-heavenly universe, God's relationship with the world is more limited because he couldn't justifiably, not again because he lacks the power, he couldn't justifiably conform the laws of the pre-heavenly universe to perfectly match his will, because then that would force the pre-heavenly universe to perfectly conform to his will. I don't know what that means. You're going to have to explain that. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I've forced you into right. a relationship with him, and then that would by force everybody into a relation with him. And that would go against God's moral nature. So for the pre-heavenly universe, I don't his know relationship you with the world is more limited. Now you ask me to explain how it's more. You, you, just, you just said it was arbitrary. Stop talking. I'm sorry, so, brother. You're so not I'm actually. Hey, hold you on, mean. dude. Is there is there a I clarification? A like, is there I, yeah, a, I, I, is there I like a, exactly. a is yeah, there like yeah. a term, Skylar, that? You want yeah. clarification on otherwise yeah, I, I want absolutely. to give him a let him finish yeah, yeah, the no, point and then come back to you. This is the problem. Like, guys, I'm not jumping in to be rude to you and try to cut you off, but like if you go on a long tangent and I can't direct each issue point by point what you're saying, we're gonna get lost and you can't go into all these things. So yeah, you're but talking, we also yeah. had opening arguments that you are not addressing at all. We're spending the whole time on your opening. I can go to that. That's fine. Okay, so so then what, how an hour left. What does I, this have I, to do I, with I'm perfectly right now, willing right? to come back and debate you on this one by one, or you can debate right. me. Your basic argument earlier minute. was I feel things that this is good enough for me, so I believe it. I don't know what you want me to do with your opinion-based argument. Caleb at least has some type of argument in syllogism or some type of form of argument. You have an argument based on your opinion and what's good enough for you to reasonably believe something. There's that nothing was, I that was, that. excuse me, hold on a sec. That was far and too like to go back to the excuse actual. Excuse me, hold about, on a like, second. That's what we're gonna hold on a second. Along. That was far too charitable and dismissive an interpretation of what I said. If that's what you honestly believe, I, I don't respect that opinion at all. I really don't. I, I don't that's really cool. like how this is going. My opinion are relevant to this debate. Can we get back to what I was talking about with Satan? And then we'll come back to your argument. And I can deal. You can put up whatever premises you want, you can ask me whatever <laughs> question you want. But I'm trying to understand what Caleb's saying here because he's saying somehow right. that there's a limited Whatever. time frame. What, uh, Caleb, like, now I've lost what Caleb was actually saying here. All right, me. clarification I was trying to understand is, is you're saying that God, somehow Satan was limited to certain actions at one time period and then at a different time period he is, he is more, he's able to do more in one time period and less than another. That's one thing you said, right? Is that correct? Right, so I'm. So let me just clarify this one that. point. Yes, yes, but I need to clarify it. But yeah, if you want a yes or no, yes. So yeah. So basically, okay. so somehow, like, go ahead, go ahead, finish what you're gonna say. Okay, sure. Thank you. So the time period. It's not like the time period is like on Monday God is limited this much, and on Tuesday He's back to full power, right? The argument is it's for the pre heavenly time period sometimes christians refer to this as the trial time period that's when god's powers not his physical powers but his relation with the world is more limited and then that's we move into the that's what i want to to the eschaton that's, it. that's, the more limited that's part. when that's god what i wanted to check with you about yeah, okay, that's it. how is he more well, that's the unlimited he's on un okay how is it how, where where does the difference how does it change where does satan's powers become limited how do they limit the powers of Satan? No, no, it's not that it's not that Satan. Right. So in the eschaton, Satan's not part of the new heavens and new earth. So he can't um, exercise temptations upon people. So right now, Satan can't exercise any temptations on us. No, he can't. We're not in the eschaton. OK, when, when. OK, so right now, could God stop him from allowing us to for him to tempt us? Could he stop us? Could he stop him? And if he can't, if he could stop him, but he won't, what's the reason why he won't stop him? 
Right, so my argument is, and I'm not speaking for Craig or anybody else, but my argument is that God can't stop him, not physically, but it would conflict with his moral nature, right? Okay, why does it conflict with his moral nature? That's what I'm trying to ask. Because, right, because his relation with the pre-heavenly world is more limited. He only can exercise, basically, he That's can right. exercise. How is it more limited? Tyler? How how is it more limited? I'm explaining. You got to give me more than five seconds to explain it's something. Christ, we'll get to the fucking point, Skyler, right? it's not sorry. a five second answer. What on earth? It's man? not a five chill. second answer. Skyler. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Just chill, friend. dude. I'm, I'm sorry. Chill. It's frustrating when I ask a direct question, right? Good. It's and frustrating and for us. Like, I'm trying to get a specific this. answer. It's and also like, frustrating for us, and we're trying to be patient. We all do is turn to be patient. Okay. Can I? Can I? Please, Josh. Can I just? Sorry. For us. Try to be patient. Try to be patient. Con 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 commandeer yourself and, and relax. Chill. We you can't have complicated philosophical conversations. Someone's ready to pounce on you the second you talk. You can't. Well, you just try cannot. to be more precise is all I'm asking. Be more okay, precise language. Chill. Asking. Chill, please. I'm asking you nicely to chill, please. <clears throat> please. This isn't fun and this isn't Jesus, really Dr. my doctor, Joshko, and stop complaining. Okay. Dude, asking you nicely to chill. Ready for Josh? Josh, take, go ahead. Let's all just take a breath. <laughs> um, so maybe to clarify, um, so Caleb, are you saying that that he has decided, God has decided during the pre heavenly period, based on his plan, based on his his will, that he's He's done like a Philippians 2 sort of thing that Jesus did when he said, all right, then when the Lagos came and, and made himself flesh, that he emptied himself, that he chose to limit his power. But uh, it, as part of his plan, it's not like, all right, Satan's here, and so that diminishes my power. This is this is based on choice as part of the plan, and because it's part of the plan that he can't go against the plan, I, I think that maybe that's where the confusion is. Yeah, kind of. So it's the argument is that God, by necessity of his moral nature, he wants to, he creates beings so they can enter a relationship with him. But a world where everybody's in relation with God is a world where all the physical laws perfectly match God's will. But he can't create people in that immediacy. So otherwise that would coerce them into relations. So he has to, given his moral nature, if he wants to create create them in a pre-heavenly world that's not perfectly conformed to his will, but then that opens the door to being able to exercise their wills in ways that go against what God would want for the pre-heavenly universe. But once the, um, the beings have entered into relation that are going to, now they're in perfect harmony with God. And since Satan won't be in harmony with God, he's outside of that realm. And I'm not saying you guys agree with that, but I think that undermines premise six of the argument. <laughs> the reason this doesn't work is uh, you're acting as if it's against God's nature to take out an enemy. That's what basically you would have to articulate. It doesn't matter what timeline it is, right? He took out lots of people that did that went against him. There is no reason that as soon as he went against him in heaven, that Satan would not have been removed. It would okay, have been can justified I ask Josh, by God. It would have been justified by God. You're interrupting me. It would have been justified by God uh, to remove him. He's already justified removing removing him from the future. Okay. So what you're Josh, saying doesn't match up to the argument. Okay. Can I ask Josh? I thought I answered this, Josh. Did you understand my answer? Because Kyler doesn't seem to. That that allowing Satan to try humanity isn't just about, we all understand Satan is evil, it's allowing to try human beings so that human beings decide they're evil too and he, they can join Satan at the end of the, end of the, end of the age. Do you understand my answer? I'm not saying yeah, it's sure. right, I'm just, do you understand it? Because he doesn't seem to understand it. Oh, I or understand the answer now. I can give you a rebuttal to it, actually. Because, okay, uh, so do that and, and tone yeah. it down so we can have a conversation. All right, listen, okay. Thanks. Thanks, You're that'd saying be nice. Go, put put it say it one more time, just really clear, so that way I can respond. Well, can Josh? Can you explain it, Josh? Because I want to. No, no, sure no, no. Just say it one more time for the audience. Say it one more time for the audience. That so that, so people have a choice. I, I don't want to misarticulate. I want to. I don't want to misrepresent what you're saying. Just say it one more time. 
it's probably a lot more productive if you articulated it first. Okay, so you don't want to. I'll do, I'll, go, I'll do it for you. That's fine. Dude, I'll, uh, so what you're saying is that uh, you, you know, I'm yeah. asking you to do it. And then as soon as I, I say that, I'll answer the question. And I'm asking you to, you to stop the stupid tactics and have a real conversation. Okay. This will go what into do you want to do? Do you want me to answer the question it. or do you want to keep doing this and attacking me personally? I wanted Josh want to, to answer the question. That's what I asked. Josh I, he did answer, answer the question. No, he did. He started to and you jumped in. Josh, do you get what I said? Please answer the question. Do you get what I said, I, Josh? I, 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 yeah, I think so. Um, so I mean, I, I would say that Orthodox Christian theology, um, particularly given, you know, some, I guess, kind of going historically here a little bit, when you when you start to run into um, late Second Temple period, and you start entering into this apocalyptic idea, this dualism of. Um, where the problem of evil really becomes um, perhaps more pronounced amongst people's e sorry, I'm kind of going roundabout, but something like the book of Daniel, where you have the, the question of why is it that, um, you know, there's all this turmoil in the world. Why is it that, um, you know, this, um, this eruption of, uh, you know, the divine uh, of God coming into this universe and saving why isn't this happening? And there, there becomes this sort of dualistic approach uh, to understanding uh, how God is interacting with the world. And he's for a period of time, and I think Caleb is probably as tying into what you're saying, for a period of time, he is allowing um, the powers of this world to have more Free uh, control than, um, you know, what, yes. what they will have later. Yes, exactly. Uh, and the, the purpose of that would be that uh, if... See if I can give an analogy. If a potential um, purpose, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So yeah, the, the office. Totally there's a there's an episode of the office where they find out that there's someone that used to be in prison working in the office, and Dwight <laughs> finds out who it is, and he's walking around in front of this guy, and he's got like a hundred dollars in ones hanging out of his back right pocket, and he's bending over and you know pushing the cash out in front of him. And I think that's sort of a, Craig, it sounds like a similar concept. It's it's not causing the person to sin necessarily or directly, but it's it's allowing, in, in Dwight's to, mind, Yes. Yeah, it was allowing him to manifest what was inside of him. What so was that, inside, you know, exactly. And could you possibly see the purpose why God would want a testing ground for human beings? Mm -hmm. So some decide to love him and some decide to become what they want to become and give voice to their evil inside of them. I can totally understand that. Can you? I mean, Skylar doesn't seem to. to, I, I, oh, to, to I mean, I can, so many things. So first of all, like, okay, if we need to test people's love for somebody, mm -hmm. that's pretty bad. Okay, anytime. I said, to test, I I don't, yes, hold on. Just give me a chance to speak. I'll let you go through that. It's fine. Gosh. It's fine. All right. So if you want, you like, we basically you're saying that he uses Satan to test people <laughs> and to yep. bring out what uh, you know what th what could come through about through their free will. Um, yeah. That's why in the if you guys looked at the argument in the premises, if there was no Satan, people would still have free will. That was part of the argument. So having Satan there doesn't stop the ability for human beings to be able to sin and do all types of things that you would consider to be immoral. All it does is eliminate the being who's trying to take people and lead them away from God out of the picture so there are more people saved. So what you're specifically using as an argument doesn't work. Well, it it does, but you you put you put a lot of presumptions that aren't necessarily. You know, I I'll go over this in detail in my analysis, and you can object to every single thing I say. But you're putting a lot of presumptions. First of all, you're like, presuming. Oh, yeah. Okay, so for, okay, thank you. Can we? Because this needs to be talked oh, about. I just want. I mean, when you're, I just want you to get. To, I'm not trying to be rude, but like you're talking about, I'll do this in the analysis. I'm, I'm okay, like, well, you've been rude. Here, so here, you've been, you've been really rude, and and I'll. I'll no, analyze you've not been. It. Listen, I think you guys it's a been, tactic. I think just it's a tactic. fucking go on with it, my man. Jesus Christ. Okay, I what think is it's a point? tactic, dude. I think I, it's I don't tactic, care dude. if you think it's a tactic. It doesn't matter. Good. If you, this is analyzed. We're talking about everything but the debate right now. Good. I'll go over this in detail. I think it's a tactic. I don't buy it. I don't think you're as charged up can as you're Can you get to the argument, or are we just going to talk about me? Just uh, Go ahead. You said you had things to rebut it. You said you would wait to the review of the video, the debate, for some reason. Just tell me now where I'm wrong. I didn't say you were wrong, first of all. You're trying to put this in zero sum. Let's combat. I said 
You are making presumptions. Don't act like this isn't a debate. Like you're acting like this is a friendly conversation where there's just a dialogue. We didn't come I here. I honestly for thought this was going to be a, a lot more debate. Friendly. If you wanted a dialogue, honest, you came on my channel, we would have had a dialogue. Like we're here for a debate, bro. Let's stop. Just get to your point. Okay. I honestly thought that this was going to be a lot more conversive and a lot. I I honestly did. Oh, Jesus, I said it in the I'm video about the topic. Okay, so I'll get to the topic. The um. So you you understand the first part that it makes sense to me that Satan would try men's hearts so that they they do what so they become what they actually are. I didn't say he forced anybody to love them. I said people are people. Satan Satan puts the temptations. Some temptations are relatively benign. So he put pornography. I did it. Everybody else did it. It's not that big of a deal. Some temptations are really disgusting, and you wouldn't do it. Josh wouldn't do it. Uh, Caleb wouldn't do it. And some people, people do it go. anyways. Some yes, people thank would. you. God wants yeah. those people to separate themselves from him forever. That makes but sense if, to me. No, but, but I mean, if you put the temptation in front of them, maybe they won't do it. That temptation adds to the ability I mean, to do something. That's a good question. Okay, see, I want to say that's a good well, question. I, Th I, that, but I, I want to really converse about it. That's a good okay, question. Well, all right, so in life, just like life, when you have temptation, it makes things harder. Would you disagree with that general premise? No, hundred percent. You you would say that pre that when people tempt you with something, it doesn't make it any more difficult, right? But some okay, temptations are benign. So I I I. Well, wait a minute. Do you agree or things. disagree? I, I misunderstood you. You said you disagreed at first. So you agree now? No, temptations make things harder for you to to stop to not do. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, perfect, perfect. We agree. We're agreeing. So okay. by yes, having totally. Satan tempt people, it makes it harder for people to do good. I, I agree. Okay, no, wait, wait, now, let me okay, so it now, would be better if we had no Satan. Okay, wait, let me explain. Because I I yielded to Satan for a long time. Bible even says that in, in Ephesians 2. Once you had your conversation with the God of this world. So I was doing things that were satanic but relatively benign pornography, drugs, things like that, that no, God doesn't ultimately really care about because they're not evil in any meaningful sense of the term. You, you, you would put temptations in front of you. You'd yield to some of them. I don't think you'd ever become a Nazi. I hope I'd never become a Nazi. I don't think Josh, I know for a fact Josh would never become a Nazi. Let's say that. I don't think if, I'd if ever- If any of us were raised in Nazi Germany, you'd be Nazis. Most but you'd likely. be a Nazi up to a point where it was where it was like you wouldn't actually torture human beings and enjoy it. I Why? Why not? What do you think that these Nazi soldiers that tortured and killed human beings didn't like grow up in this culture that taught them to do it or got whipped in, like got convinced no, by I get a, that. someone but, who's but they, them to they, be an So they yield to the temptation up to a point, but they wouldn't go past the point where they become Why? actually Why evil they? human beings. Wait, because because they're why? not evil. They're not evil. Okay. So some what are you saying? Some people are born evil, evil, some aren't. Well, well hold on. Let's hear from Craig. Some people are born evil and some aren't. I think. I think, asked, I, think I think you think asked. I think you asked Craig a, why, and so we'll give Craig a chance to answer why. Okay, but this is actually this is actually this is fine. This is rough, but it's it's not crazy. No. <laughs> yes, I, that's a really good philosophical question. Are some people born evil? I think that's the whole point of tempting people. So that yes, some people. Do you think you could ever do what Joseph Mengele did? Could you ever torture children? Torture if children. If you know that this, God doesn't need to test them. If God knows that person is evil and is going to be a Hitler, why even have them born? Right? See, what you're saying is God uh, yeah, has to be born, knows before they're born that they're going to be evil, then sends Satan to tempt them so that they can go ahead and fulfill that evil that he knew that they were going to be born with in the beginning. Uh, I, you see how, like, out there I understand. I understand your objection, but you you do understand that that kind of makes complete sense to me because you are allowing somebody. You're being perfectly just. You're allowing somebody to become something that they were going to become. You knew they were going to become it. But well, I didn't become evil, and I don't honestly think you would, nor Doctor Josh. Evil, evil. Yeah, well, you, it you doesn't make a difference. Like, who would become evil doesn't make a difference. But if there are people that become evil because God made them that way. Isn't that a problem? Well, that's no, I don't think that's what actually happened. I okay, think well, then how did people become are evil? evil? God didn't sure. make them evil, He wants them to be good, but they're truly bad. How did I they think become there's a that real way? difference? How did they become that way? I think uh, what I honestly think it is, and this is just speculation, that's why this has got to be toned down. I don't have answers. This is a debate, yes, it could be rough, but this is just speculation. 
What I honestly think it is, is I think that evil people delight in evil for evil's sake, that they're that despicable. They torture children and you they know, like doing why it. Why are they like that? That's the I question you just say. That's, that's a the mystery. You just the Bible even says that. The mystery of iniquity uh, that is in the world. That's the mystery at the heart of okay. it all. But you're saying that mystery proves God doesn't I, I think there's no reason to think that people are born evil. And you're making a claim that's extraordinary that you're not going to be able to demonstrate. And you you just showed me you can't demonstrate it by saying nobody knows. So I don't accept your claim that babies are born evil or people are born I evil. Or babies, just, babies, well, babies are born evil. People are born evil. It, well, you didn't say Do babies. You honestly, okay, you're I saying, what you're saying is baby or people are born with an evil inclination. That's okay, what you're I can arguing. demonstrate the claim. You say, claim I can't demonstrate. I don't care how much evil you by what standard are you gonna now we're gonna appeal to light. Go ahead, go ahead, please. No, you, you now you're back to gamesmanship. Do you want to have a conversation or not? You're back to gamesmanship. I can demonstrate the claim. I don't I don't think you, Skyler, if you were born in Nazi Germany, I don't think in your heart, as it was when you were a child growing up in Nazi Germany, I don't think you'd ever become capable of becoming a Dr. Joseph Mengele. I think there's something fundamentally different about that human being. He's a child of the devil sure. and he's evil through and through. You're telling me your opinion right now. So if I, sorry. Yeah. And you're telling me your opinion. All you're saying is you don't think, you don't think I would do this. That's an opinion. Be, I don't know what the argument is to support your position. Whatever. Then it's all my opinion. Okay, whatever. Go ahead, Dr. <laughs> Josh. I'm sorry. No, I I was just gonna... like, I'm trying to be direct, but honestly, man, you've got to recognize that was an opinion. What you just said. I don't think you, Scott, okay, let him speak. Would be a Nazi. Let I appreciate. Him speak. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate you saying that about me. That is a kind thing to say about me, and I appreciate that. Right? But you just saying this is my opinion. You wouldn't do this. You have to recognize this is an argument. And Dude, my some why... of the philosophical speculation is just opinion speculation. That's, That's why you got to say I have all the answers. You you got it wrong. You can't do that in a philosophical conversation. If I'm you want to be complex and get somewhere, Go I'm not ahead. saying I, I have say all the answers. You I asked you to back up what you claimed, and you weren't able to do it. Go ahead. I, I think I did. Josh wants to say something. Maybe Caleb would love to jump in. Probably <laughs> get some more. Actually. For Actually, I don't remember what I was going to say. Go ahead, Kim. I don't have a lot to Josh say on that. I mean, there are different debate. I mean, there are different perspectives on like original sin. And I mean, I don't take a Calvinist type perspective that like be people are born inherently evil. People's wills are not fixed on definitely doing what's good because I'm arguing that that's when people are in perfect union with God, but people have the potential to do evil and their evil desires. So that's all I have to add on that. But your point about free will, you said well, people could still have, okay, premise five, humans would still have free will if there's no devil. I mean, I, I agree with that. So I, I was, I questioned premise six, but go ahead. So and, and when you deal with premise six, which is what's premise six up here, uh, God has the ability to prove Satan out of existence. <clears throat> You admit he has the ability. He just won't because of his nature. Right. That's he has true. the physical power. Well, he has yeah, the physical so power, right. but not. He has the power to do something. That's all I'm saying in that premise. Yeah, yeah but let's so not. Okay, but there, hang on. There could be an equivocation going on here. I'm not saying you're doing it on purpose, but when you say God can, yeah, he physically can. But I'm saying what I question on premise six is can he justifiably and I'm saying he can't justifiably given his moral nature. So when we unpack the broader implications of premise six is what I object to. Not, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, the way it's phrased, sure, but the way it's phrased is a little too general when we start bringing in some theological distinctions. So, that's so where are I you question. saying God cannot do things that God can't do things against his nature? Is that what you're saying? All right. Okay, so God can do nothing that goes against his nature. Uh, and it's against his nature to uh, basically eliminate Satan at that point. What? It's against his nature. No, not, not, it's not, no, it's not against his nature to eliminate Satan. It's against his nature to perfectly conform the pre-heavenly world to perfectly match his That's will. That's not my premise is. That's not yeah, my premise. Yeah, no, well, you, dude, you got to recognize that there are broader implications here. Come on, like this isn't... Well, um, then you need to articulate them better because you're not you're not being clear about what you're saying. You're If someone, if I, if it's in my nature that I cannot grow wings out of my back and fly, then it's not possible for me to grow wings out of my back and fly. Then you need to say with that premise uh, that it, basically it's not possible... Uh, 
how would I say this? No, uh, God is ability proof Satan of existence. Um, you're going to have to show why you're already admitting that it's possible. You're saying it's against his, it's weird the way you're phrasing. It. I guess that's what's bothering me. I guess you're trying if to I, say that like nature somehow, if something's against their nature, that's separate from his ability. But if, if it's in my nature that I don't have the ability to walk, then I still have what the it ability to walk. Like you, but you want, you know, this one, God, it is in, it is against God's nature to tell a lie, but God obviously could technically lie physically able to do perform no that's what i'm saying lie. he can't that's what i'm saying he can't that's the point and that's the uh, reason he can't well, lie is because so... it's against his nature because like i said use my example it would be against my nature to grow wings out of my back and fly because my nature my essence doesn't right, have the ability uh... to grow wings out of my back and fly so that premise he would have to say that it's just not possible for god to stop satan because he right. would go against his nature but that's right, not but he's, he's adding this huge caveat. I don't want to. Oh, yeah, wanna... ability wise, he can do it, but it goes as if it's right, like a but... decision being made. It's not a decision. He just simply can't do it. Right. But I, I, don't I, want, doctor, I want Dr. Josh to talk because he had something. <laughs> I, I guess I just wanted to, and we can obviously go back to this. Um, but I mean, just maybe to, to, to take a step back more broadly, I think part of the thing that, um, you said something interesting, Caleb, in the beginning, where you said this is not a, like a deductive proof. This argument's not a deductive proof, um, but it, um, you know, it's suggestive. I suppose uh, that's not the word you used, but You're talking um, about my argument. Yeah, yeah, it's not something that's deductive. You know, like it's a married bachelor or something. Um, and I think that's part of you know when I think about this. That's kind of where I go. Um, so I sit back and I think, okay, let, let's let's think about um, all the ways that Christian theology post hoc is probably not the right way to describe this, but you know, sort of looking back in a in the way that mythology does. I'm not trying to make that equation here, um, but in in, a, in the way that mythology does, mythology looks back or looks around at things that have already happened or already in existence and say, what? How did these get here? Right. Um, and I think that there was a group, uh, probably still is, called the Congregation of Lord Rael that I debated on the Non Sequitur show. And one of the things that they 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 worship this this guy named Rael, who's supposed to be the reincarnated <laughs> Jesus. I don't know if you remember that, Craig. But <laughs> no, I didn't was, see it. Who, who said yeah, Fletcher Stock? He's like, was, no, I'm just <laughs> <my God. laughs> Wait, yeah, shut shut, shut that guy Lord down. Like, okay, yeah. on an earth, where are we going down? <laughs> but but one of the things play. that they one of the things that they said was always oh, one of the proofs that they had for Lord Rael being the reincarnated Jesus is that um is that there was a hurricane that was coming at my thing is beeping at me for some reason. Um but uh sorry yeah that, that there was a hurricane that was coming in the hurricane did, you know redirected and it was uh they said oh it was because Lord Rael you know, did this. He he redirected the hurricane. So it was it was taking an event and giving a post hoc rationalization for it. And what I'm saying is that in a lot of these cases, and I think this is probably where Skylar is coming from. Please correct me if I'm wrong, Skylar. But it's looking at these um, s sort of post hoc rationalizations and saying, okay, why is it that, for example, we see evil in the world? Well, we look at these different texts that are coming from, um, you know, God's word, and we're saying, okay, it, like the Trinity. Uh, you know, the Son is called God here, the Father is called God here, the Holy Spirit's called God over here. There's no direct statement about the Trinity, but how do we make it all make sense if these all are correct? Well, this is our sort of, again, post hoc might not be the right word, but our, our, our way that we no, make I sense get, of it theologically, systematically. Um, and so I think from a just taking it back to like a rational standpoint or, you know, reasonable um I think that that's not a defeater necessarily, you know, like a, a deductive proof or something. But I think for me, it's it says okay. Does this does this make um, how how did you say, Caleb? There are um, more things essentially more things going for it than going against it, and that's sort of how mm -hmm. I come to a lot of these things because um, I'm not a philosopher. But what it, it seems like there are more things going for this is somebody you know, this is a, this is a theology that's systematically looking back and trying to piece together what it is that we see to make it make sense to us. Right, but that's that's the whole point of a theology or a philosophy is you're looking sure. at the things that actually are, and you're trying to circle those squares with 
either the ideal world or the ideal theological construct. So you you by, are by definition doing post hoc rationalizations, and the key root the root of the word rationalize is rational. You're trying to to give rational voice to us. The only thing that I said to you that hasn't been brought up is that it's entirely possible that there there is there is an element of this that is beyond the purview of human understanding completely, and that's entirely possible possible just from a philosophical point of view and the bible says that all but says it like if you were talking to a physicist there'd be a part the part where he just be sounds like he's talking gobbledygook where he's actually talking really really complex equations and you just can't process it properly because you don't have the tools I think so what we what we might do is give josh the uh dr josh the last word just because we will go into the q a pretty quick here unless uh I'll definitely go back to Dr. Josh. If anybody else has any other Follow like me. key points that they're just like absolutely wanting to kind of draw together those threads from the debate, we can do that. But otherwise, uh, we might just uh, have this be the last word. It's fine with me. Go for it. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess. What? The last one. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'll say something uh, really grandiose. No, I, I think that... Um, in the end, Craig, I, I absolutely agree. And if I were to go back to Christianity, um, that would have to be the position that I would take because I think this this idea that we can, in some of the core tenets of Christianity, rationalize our way um, to these mysterious, you know, aspects of the divine. I think that's very problematic. And I, I don't. Uh, so I hear you, Caleb. You know, like when you think about the Trinity, I would probably disagree with. Um, it's, the way that uh, it sounds modalistic a little bit, unless I misheard you, which is entirely possible. Um, but I mean, you know, I think that there are things that if, if I were going to come back, I would have to say these things are above me, right? The, uh, uh, outside of my pay grade. Um, totally. And I would have to be okay with that. So, but if that's the case, then I would have to say this is a faith-based position. It's a theology that I'm forming, not based on some rational justification. Um, like epistemologically, I suppose. Um, but I'm having to have faith that at its, you know, at, at God's level, there is, um, you know, a, a no contradiction. Thanks so much, gentlemen. It has been a lot of fun. I have to add, by the way, if you have not known this, folks, Dr. Josh is like a superb impressionist. He has, um, <laughs> if, uh, if you haven't heard, there is a very funny video of uh, Kent Hovind an impression of Kent Hovind, I should say. It's hard to tell we're real from from uh, an impression, but that's on Skyler's page. And I, uh, he also has a superb impression of praise. <laughs> so if you have not met praise, folks, um, oh, no. praise is a regular debater here. And regularly, uh, one of his key phrases is, well, it's already been totally debunked, but I can't do it quite like Josh. I When I first heard Josh, I was like, oh my gosh, that's perfect. So Josh, I won't put you on the spot. I, I would say when it feels appropriate, if you want to spontaneously let that one rip, I will never hold it against you because I just, it's one of my favorites I've ever heard. Praise so. is currently in control of the stream. I just want to point that <laughs> it's out. True. You know. um, yes, praise. We mean it like it's an endearing way, praise. So we'll jump to these questions. Thanks so much for your questions, folks. Praise, are you there? I don't know. Maybe he's praise. I don't know, but uh, thanks so much. <laughs> he, left. <laughs> he left. He was insulted. He just took uh -huh. off. Steven Dean, thanks for your super chat, who says, congrats, Caleb and Craig, on your rationally easy win. Yes. Our Ooh, friendly, Go, friendly benevolent memes troll. Memes plenty. Memes, memes, <laughs> memes. More memes. Steven Steen, thanks for your other super chat, who says, Skyler is a James asexual. Appreciate mm. that. Maybe Can't I can't say I'm not That's, flattered. Uh, not that. Mm. Please, not that as a me. Please, That's, um, not. It's the kind of <laughs> sexual I want to be. That's oh, very. I've never heard oh, that this one is before. Too much information. James, oh. sexual. Mm. Thanks for your ooh, super ooh, chat ooh. from Caleb, or as he also likes to be called, Caleb, who says irrefutable argument by Caleb and Craig. Got a bad fan out there, gentlemen. Totally Totally right. Totally right. These are great super chats. Keep them coming. <laughs> Loken 16. Thanks for your super chat. Who says Raptor Jesus is the truth? Mm. Raw man. Under his cross. A loyal follower out there. Frank Mick 
Avoy, thanks for your super chat, who says, I'm a Trinity too, aren't I? Super ego, ego, and id. So a good Freudian oh, Yeah, that's joke. a Trinity of sorts, sure. Appreciate that. Michael Dresden, let's see. So this guy's a troll. I'm not going to read all of these. Just... Uh, <laughs> God. This is okay. I think he was here the other day for Tom Jump Skyler. So take these with a oh, grain of salt. It. He says, in all caps, of course, Skyler mm. lost already and still hasn't even realized it. Oh, that's the worst kind of loss, too. Dude, that's, that's brutal. It is. You're right. The worst is when you've lost it, you haven't realized it. That's true. I appreciate that. Stupid horror energy strikes again. Yes. She yes. is here and she says, I will create new heavens. She's quoting Isaiah 65, 17. She says, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. And then she says, there is from this verse, there is no reason for evil in this lifetime. A challenge for our Christian speakers. If either of you wants to, I can read it over because I know it's Two like well, several different ideas. I, I could just I could just oh, say more than just my reasons for you guys if you'd like. All right. I mean, I have a, I mean, I have an explanation that I offer for that. So I mean, the new heavens and new earth won't have suffering, and that's Let what rip, I was exactly Caleb. arguing. Did what happen? What <laughs> I thought he was talking. Where'd it go? Did he dis did he drop or something? Me? Caleb. Sure. No, I'm here. Oh, I thought you were going. I thought you were going to be <laughs> here. Caleb is. Can't even tell he's there. I there is. I think Caleb Dr. is a bass player. Caleb and, bass player. Caleb and Dr. Josh have bass player personalities. The bass player is like the cool guy who's really mellow, and he, That's right. him, and he gets all the girls. Yeah, he probably gets all the ladies. That's well, true. damn. Well, <laughs> very aloof. Uh, this close. <laughs> It's so true, folks. I'm curious in the live chat to get your opinion. Dr. Josh made a very keen observation at the beginning. He said, Caleb is the most peaceful, calming person you have ever encountered. Just look at him. True. That's we true. love him. That's Caleb, we love him. Beautiful. Next up. That's beautiful. Hey, Skyler and I are like two. I'm from New York and Skyler's Skyler. So it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you bring out yeah. some of the Philadelphia in me as well. <laughs> oh, oh I there you go. He's appreciate your He's super chat Martin from Boy. again, Kalab, as he likes to be called. Appreciate it. Says Skylar is the atheist equivalent of Duncan atheism. <gasps> Loud, obnoxious, Ooh. and interrupts. Oh, oh. oh. Ooh, it's rough. Oof. It's rough. Oof. Damn. Oof. I don't know Oof. what to say. Feel a little hurt. You're not an atheist. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm not an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the first thing. But, uh, you know, what are you going to do, man? What are you going to do? You're Close not enough. an atheist. I thought you were. you agnostic? Uh, yeah, I'm agnostic. Oh, I'm an atheist towards the Christian religion. But, like, generally, like a God concept, I don't. I think I'm open to it. Okay. Remember, I was a deist for a long time. Yes, I didn't know that. I've heard that. That's true. Yeah, that's right. And uh, let's see. Club, thanks for your other super chat. He says, Skylar, you're just or you're trying to justify being rude and it's not working. You're mm -hmm. the same in every debate. No justification for it. You make debates unenjoyable. You got a critic coming at Ooh. you, Skylar. Yeah, it's weird. Here, here, here's my thing. And I listen, when I made this whole thing, is if I don't feel like my answer is being my question is not being answered directly, or we're going off into a tangent about something that's not directly related to it, I'm gonna continue to follow up. Right. Uh, evidence of this last debate is watch the SD debate. A lot of people gave me crap saying I was a little aggressive towards SJ, but go to the portion of the debate where we go over my premises. I think it was premise three and watch how when I allow her to just to kind of go on a tangent for like a minute or two, she talks nothing of what my question was, which was, hey, do you agree with this premise? At the end of her diatribe that I interrupted in two minutes after I was like, hey, well, was that a yes or no? The premise. Her question was, what was the premise? So, like, yes, I get a little burnt out sometimes when I feel like someone's not answering the question directly or understanding what I'm saying. That's why I do it. But I, I think at the end of that afraid. debate, Skylar, I think you would yeah. agree she wanted to change your location. Yes, she certainly oh, wanted to change my location. <laughs> Sorry. <Slam. laughs> Next up. 
I appreciate your super chat. Scott Lott, appreciate it, said, Craig, couldn't your opening argument be used to justify any belief? Well, that was part of the point when I, you know, the, the fact that I'm trying to make this as user friendly as humanly possible, which I guess, you know, people can argue against it on those grounds. But I thought it was eminent, eminently reasonable, eminently rational. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to point it out that you could participate in this and get something out of it. Hence reasonable, hence rational. Yes, it kind of could. But that's part of the point of what reasonable means that it's user friendly and a lot of people go yeah i find that reasonable okay i don't object to that it's the point of reasonable as far as i'm concerned so yes but i consider that a strength not a weakness call me crazy. i mean <laughs> if, if like so it, it may be in the same way that right or wrong i suppose if you were standing in the middle of the street and you thought there was a big crocodile coming at you and so you jumped out of the street and uh you know a, a bus missed hitting you because you thought there was a crocodile and you jumped out of the street because of that, even though that wasn't a, like a justified true belief because there was no crocodile, it was beneficial. It was reasonable uh, it, it, because of the consequences of it. Is that? Well, I use something that actually occurred. Now I get that you don't think that there was something actually occurring to predicate the belief, but. No, not necessarily, the, but I mean, either way. Oh, well, either way, but it makes a big difference because the, the crocodile Ah, I mean, it's sketchy when you put it like that because that's that's moving the Sorry. goalpost to something that clearly isn't, rather than something that debatably is, like something that's more, more potentially true. Not like you know the unicorn. I open the door and see a unicorn in my bedroom. Is that reasonable? But that's not what I'm saying. To make the analogy to something outlandish is to, is to make the analogy on grounds that make it sound more irrational than it actually. Well, is. like Monk. I went Monk to, was I, 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 Oh, well, yeah, just, sorry, for, for my actual beliefs, okay, I went to a church in the real world and it actually occurred on a real night with real people talking real language. There was no imaginary delusions involved and I didn't necessarily even become a Christian that night. I just said, these people know something about God that I don't. I want to mm -hmm. participate with these people. I didn't say, I'm now a Christian. Let me go preach the gospel to everyone in the neighborhood and everyone's going to burn hell. I said, these people know something that I don't. Sign me up for this church. So it's more reasonable than that. That's my point. Yeah, That's no, what I thought I, we were sorry. Be talking about. Yeah, I didn't I didn't mean it to sound unreasonable. Uh, maybe, a, no and then I'll shut up, I promise. Uh, maybe like a better analogy, I keep going to TV shows, but the show Monk, you know, he's a germaphobe, right? So he always thinks that his, every time he shakes somebody's hand. But I was thinking about it, if if Monk were around right now, he, he would certainly not have the coronavirus, ostensibly. Exactly. Right? So, yes. So, so maybe that's a better analogy. Maybe there were germs, maybe there weren't, but it was beneficial. It was reasonable. Uh, the, yes. And that would be considered ritual. Analogy. Yes. Yeah, and, sorry. And actually, we start to see the wisdom of people like that. Now, my, my wife is was a monk-like person, wherein she's like, take your shoes off. I want to you know, she didn't do it before the coronavirus, but she almost mm -hmm. did. And I wouldn't let her. I want to wipe your shoes down before you step in the house. Now I let her do it. And it makes right. sense. Her positions are a lot more eminently reasonable. Right. She's always buying health shots. She's always gear building up inside of herself antitoxins and healthy stuff in 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 preparation for what might not occur. So, yes, yeah. eminently reasonable along those lines. Uh, that's what Gosh, I thought we were going to talk about. You got it. And let's see. Thanks, Kango24, for your super chat. Asks question for the Christians. How do you rationalize the fact that the Christian God is just another in a long line of deities humankind has created through history? Uh, Caleb. <laughs> and it begs the question because I don't we don't think the Christian God was created. Now, of course, the ancient Israelites conceptualized aspects about God that you know, perhaps I would argue reflected their understanding at the time and the cultural, you know, had cultural, um, they drew upon the wider frame of their culture, but that's not the same as saying that the Christian God was totally created. I mean, that would, that would just beg the question against our position. So, I mean, I would give arguments though, like I presented one at the beginning and then, yes. Gotcha. Thanks so much. And appreciate your super chat from Caleb, as he likes to be called. Caleb thinks, he yes. says, this is like a debate with three Erica's and one Duncan. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Oh, Caleb, they're calling you Duncan. <laughs> 
No. <laughs> wait. <laughs> just wait. kidding. I don't think they're wait, calling you Caleb. Wait, they're, I'm, I'm they're talking about me. It's just Caleb's right. Josh. Right. Dr. Josh. Josh. Sorry, Caleb. <laughs> You should Caleb know. He hasn't should... responded yet. It's like he's toying <laughs> with me. <laughs> okay. That that would be a debate, uh, James. Why don't we get Darth Dawkins on to oh, debate God, the God. agnostic oh version of him, apparently? That, that would be, might epic. be an epic to, you know. I'm on his oh, block dude, list, so dude. it might be a little difficult, but we could get that magic to happen. I would totally do it. Do it. I'll do a super chat. I'll do I'll do two dollars <laughs> super chat. Yeah, if that you could go, not go sign me up go for go that, down. James, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> um we'll see. He's you know, he's tough to get. But you know, everybody yeah. it's um and speaking of Erica, people just love Erica, and I get it. You know, she was a good sport the other night. She had a run in with Nathan Thompson. So oh. that was a wild one. We appreciate and give a lot of street cred to Erica for being so patient and uh Caleb strikes again. Thanks, is Caleb, for your question. Is she the Caleb I... is just ripping into you tonight, Skylar. He's coming at you. <laughs> oh, no, man. he's Bring indirectly. It. It's it's also like a backhanded insult Ooh. at me. He says Skylar was James's only mistake in life. <laughs> <laughs> what? what the heck, <laughs> Caleb? What, I mean, <laughs> what did I do? That's so great. Okay. Did he really <laughs> say that? Is yeah. this, wow, is is that, that really is Caleb like, jeez, oh, oh, I am, man. Oh. Why do you have to make it personal, Caleb? Okay, Nick, <laughs> thanks for your super chat. Nick says, Caleb is not making sense, and Craig seems very angry. You've got a critic out there, you guys. We've got, and this is, they're not referring to the last Caleb with those super chats. It's they're referring <laughs> to you, Caleb, and Craig. Okay. I, right. I don't think I was unreasonably angry. The beginning of this debate was a little rough. And Skyler brought it back down to earth so you could, he could be rough, but at the beginning it was out of the bounds of like, you know, automatically jumping on top of it and it was unpleasant. Then it, then it was fine. I don't mind him being rough and you're not answering my question and, and jostling around. Like I said, I'm a New Yorker. I can handle it up to a point. But at the beginning, I don't think I was, I don't think I was too angry. I thought I was appropriate to the situation, but I'll let Skyler and Dr. Josh decide that. Listen, I got to learn to cuddle a little bit. Is before I get you know into bed is what I should say. I gotta do a little bit more foreplay before I, I start jumping into the you know full action of the love making. I say what that, that James? Oh, you have another super chat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps maybe maybe going rough too early was not the, <laughs> not the direction oh, that was my. the most uh, uh, most profitable for open and good <laughs> friendly conversation. But you know what, things happen. I, for the, uh, you know, in your guys' defense, I think it's kind of like, yeah, sometimes it's like rough and tumble, but, you know, afterwards you're like, ah, you know, yeah, I'd be there for you if you needed it. Like, you know, it's kind of exactly. like, uh, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, you hit somebody in like football, wrestling, something like that. And you're like, ah, it's not personal. You know, you walk away and you're like, we're friends. We're fine. All right. Thanks for your super chat from Kango24, who says, for the Christians, if God created everything, then he created the worm eats children's eyes, which is called the yeah. Loa Loa filarial worm. Yeah. Well, I've talked about this in my they videos. That's the evil <clears throat> anomaly argument. There's, there's a majesty and a perfection to creation, and then the atheist always jumps to, except for this one evil anomaly. I think the evil anomaly is the exception that proves the rule. Yeah, it's there, and it's it's weird, but there's not... There's not these type of worms all over the place all the time, eating our eyes all the time. Life is basically benevolent and good and, you know, positive. Um, dry up house, you can, you can go. Well, I mean, I would argue that this, I mean, the same response that I'd give about Satan. It's like any example of evil, I'm going to argue that it's because, you know, the, the pre-heavenly universe world that we live in isn't perfectly conformed to God's will, including you know, these laws of evolution that bring about this worm. And so that's how I respond. Gotcha. And appreciate your super chat from Pierce McHugh. I didn't see a question. You can uh, let me know if you do have a question. Just fire it into the live chat as a normal chat, and I will ask it for you. Maynard saves thanks for your super chat, who said, Raw men, Dr. Josh and Skyler, mm. it uh, I'm, fired I'm it up, awesome. raptors. Mm. It's good to know that? that, like, it's 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 really it's 
it's good to know so many of these people out there still, you know, they're still practicing the Raptor Jesus beliefs, you know? It's good to know that. You know, a lot of people now, it's so easy to get wrapped up in the world and everything that's going on with COVID-19. But you got to remember, there's there's a big guy up there with big, sharp claws that wants you to be under them and wants you to be saved by by Raptor Jesus. So I appreciate you, you Raptor Baits out there, keeping keeping hope alive during these tough, tough times. Preach it, Skyler. A true mm, man with man. claws. That was beautiful. Thanks. That was beautiful. Thank you, uh, thank you all for being here tonight. We really appreciate it. the The debaters are what make the channel fun. They're like so. I can't thank them enough. They are, as I mentioned, their links are in the description, folks. So if you're listening, you're like, "Hmm, I like that." Well, there's plenty more where that came from. And also, want to let you know. Thanks so much for your questions, folks. It's always fun to hang out with you. Tomorrow we will be back on. I'm going to warn you guys. Like tomorrow's <laughs> going to be a controversial one. The most controversial we've ever hosted. Wow. And you know that my philosophy is different. I, my philosophy is we are not an anti, uh, what's the, we're not a deplatforming channel. We are one that's kind of like, hey, you know, uh, if we think our arguments are better than those out there that are sick and twisted, then we will go out and oppose them because we think it's better than them being on their own and kind of sharing their message without the opposition. So, we do have a couple of controversial ones coming up, including tomorrow. <laughs> also, though, tomorrow you will see if I can cut my own hair well. I'm actually going to cut my own wow. hair tonight. It is a... Uh, wow. Yes. So, Dude, wow. this is a channel, man. This is like a seriously cool, entertaining channel. This is That's, good stuff. <laughs> because of me cutting my own hair. <laughs> Thank you, and, and like some <laughs> like, really controversial thing happens yeah, tomorrow. It's that like the most controversial lot. thing so, ever. Awesome. I feel like I got blue balled on what's actually going to happen here. Like you just built all that up. Right. And that's, that's like, you're like, we got these two man. controversial points tomorrow. Then you're just like, you didn't tell yeah, you didn't so deliver. You got to tune in. You got to well, tune in and watch. <laughs> you gotta, see. You know, where's the money it's shot here? I mean, we got to. Basically, <laughs> you know that I. We have, we have only one rule, and it's the rule that I'm like, ideally, I mean, because well, if people are abusive, we'll say, hey, can you come yeah. lo level with us? But the rule is, like, no hate speech, obviously. Sure. And I, it's not just because we want, like, YouTube to not boot us, but because, like, obviously, I don't want hate speech here. Sure. Tomorrow, it will be so controversial that it will, <laughs> I don't think it'll have hate speech, but I would say that it will be close. I want you to remember that I don't agree with any sort of hate inspired positions. Uh, and so those of which you interpret as that, I want you to know that I'm actually like with you in being against that. And the reason that we host it is because I'm thinking let's, You're instead of having it. those people exactly is like, let's bring it into the light and give yeah. arguments against it. Because if it, yeah. it's as flawed and crooked as we think it is, then this should be a win rather than them getting to you know, give it their message to an audience without the opposition. So I get how some people are kind of like, James, don't platform people like certain people. And, you know, I get that. I'm sympathetic. It's not an easy uh, question. So anyway. It's you not tell an easy them. question. I lean on the sides of let people expose themselves and don't, don't hide these beliefs under rocks because they get worse in, you know, they, they, they fester in secrecy. Let these people expose themselves and, Maybe they maybe they'll even change their mind. I'll have them debate Skylar. Maybe Skylar will change their mind. Maybe. Yes, it is a concern of mine that when we push people underground, I don't think that all of them are just going to kind of go quietly. I think some of them will it will fester and build up and eventually come out worse. But yes. uh, thank you again to our speakers. This has been a true, true fun time. And frustrated atheists just asked a question, namely question for Dr. Josh: Why is he so damn sexy? <laughs> so, why that's a, this should, this that should have been their argument if they had put the like evidence there's a god dr josh's beautiful sexy face it would have been game over like I would, well, how beautiful. could i have argued Everybody against is. that during this debate like how could i have done that so josh answer I'm answer. sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> you just, it's a given. You, it's just something that I feel like we're out. putting the cart before the horse here. Isn't that, uh, <laughs> can you, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? What? Who? 
Uh, was James gone? Oh, did he? He's okay, so sorry. My internet just froze up. So we're going to go. Oh, Thanks so weird. much, everybody. Hope you have mysterious. a great night. Why is Josh so sexy? Dun-dun, silence. <laughs> Can you